Hello and welcome to a Tarkib session by the Assembly in association with Future Now and N5. Today's topic is cloud data visualization for startups. And before I introduce our speaker, let me tell you a little bit more about the Assembly itself. Uh, the Assembly is a smart lab and makerspace that's been based out of N5, which is uh, the startup hub for Dubai Internet City since 2014. We've done over 350 free workshops for the community to impart skills related to exponential technology. Our workshops come classified in three streams, assembly hack workshops, concentrate on embedded systems and IoT and hardware. So things like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis and their associated uh, sensors and activators. Uh, you don't need to bring your own uh, hardware. We provide that for you. Assembly code sessions focus more on the software applications, on software paradigms and APIs and frameworks and apps. So uh, the only hardware you need for that is obviously your laptop. Uh, we also have uh, recently introduced the assembly data science stream, which focuses on topics related to artificial intelligence and machine learning, including today's uh, subject. Our audience ranges from students to professionals to entrepreneurs. Obviously, we're in an entrepreneurship hub, so that is a given. But we also include uh, the you know students in on that who want to get into technology or into entrepreneurship themselves, as well as working professionals who want to broaden their horizons. So there is no restriction on age or on experience level. We welcome anyone who's interested in technology. Our focus is on smart technology and practical applications. So we show you how to build things with the technology. So we don't just show you a theoretical overview, but we give you a chance to build something. And we hope that you go away from the sessions wanting to collaborate with others who want to build things and learning how to do things for yourself. Uh, on social media, you'll find us at, at Make Smart Things, which is also our mission statement. So you wear on Instagram, on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on LinkedIn. And you can find us on YouTube. We've posted a lot of videos, the videos which you are also on our website, www.theassembly.ae. You can find a lot of the past workshop videos we've done. We were during lockdown. We did a lot of online workshops as well. All those videos can be found on our website. And uh, now we have resumed live workshops, uh, as you can see, and uh, we'll definitely be doing more of that also. So let me go get right into introducing our speaker. Uh, Shafiq Kamrul Azman will be doing the topic today. Shafiq is an AI and a machine, lang uh, machine learning research engineer from Khalifa University. So his day job involves AI and ML and data science. Uh, academically, he has an MSc from in computing and information science from Mazdar Institute. And he's worked on many projects, uh, but in, in AI ML, of course, but in the sub genres of sub niches of aeronautics on power engineering and by bioinformatics, which is a very interesting and mathematical topic which involves uh, things like the Human Genome Project. So it's very challenging work, but Shafiq has been uh, participating in that uh, during his work time. Um, Apart from his work endeavors, Shafiq also has written many articles as well as done lots of talks. Uh, his speciality is in image text processing and things like convolutional neural networks and LSTM. Uh, he's done a lot of work with PyTorch. And of course, the very interesting field of GANs, uh, which, uh, which you see nowadays uh, is quite a buzzword also. Uh, and of course, the challenging and mathematical field again of game AI. So he's worked on many different things and he is an all round uh, machine learning brain, uh, as, as we like to call him. He's a, he's a, he calls himself a machine learning geek, and that's a very apt uh, phrase. Uh, he's done many previous workshops for the assembly, including uh, one on palette transfer in Python. You can find all these on our website, by the way. Palette transfer involved transferring the palette from one image onto another. Uh, he did a workshop on transfer learning using the UCSD BIRDS 200 data set as an example. And he did a very fun workshop for us uh, involving generating names for Elder Scrolls, the game, uh, using a neural network. So you can find Shafiq's full profile, including the list of his publications on Google Scholar under uh, his website, siafers.xyz. And you'll find a lot of good stuff there relating to the work he's done. You can connect with him on LinkedIn at this link. And of course, if you want to check out the code he's created, you can find that on his GitHub as well. Uh, so without further ado, let me hand it over to Shafiq. Shafiq, take it away, please. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cloud Data Visualization for Startups workshop. I'm Shafiq. I'm going to take you through what I do as a primer to dealing with cloud hosted data. So as startups, you might have data stored somewhere in a server in the cloud. So this could be in um, an S3 storage, a, a, a cloud uh, bucket storage, 
or it could be in some um, database, for example, uh, Google BigQuery or AWS Redshift. So depending on the, the way that your data is stored, you're gonna have different ways of dealing with, um, uh, with trying to pull out the data and trying to visualize it. Generally, this is a difficult problem because you have data stream that is constantly incoming, um, appending into the rows of your database. Uh, but at the same time, you want to create some visualization flow that you can then reuse when new data come in and analyze uh, the new data um, with the same notebook, uh, ideally using the same set of code. So today we're just going to walk through an example kind of uh, workflow that you might do in, um, in Google Colab uh, in conjunction with Google BigQuery. And we're going to use a prepared data set. But of course, if you have your own data set that is hosted uh, in BigQuery, you, you can pull that data out as well. The whole idea here is not to focus on the BigQuery um, uh, you know, functionalities, but rather to work with uh, the visualizations itself. So um, let's maybe jump straight into the code and uh, I'll walk you through how you would um, start a Colab notebook, connect to um, a BigQuery project and start pulling data and start doing some visualizations. So here we go. Um, so here in my screen, I have um, an example visualization notebook. It's got some starter code um, just to get things um, ready so you can uh, hit the ground running kind of thing. Um, what we're going to start with is just creating a project on Google Cloud Platform. If you don't have a Google account, now is probably a good time to uh, to start and uh, create one. Um, you're going to have to enable billing, but don't worry, this won't incur um, any charges on your account when you're using BigQuery or small queries like this, unless you're, uh, you're using this constantly um, you know, for, for uh, production. It, it won't incur uh, you know, like hundreds of dollars or anything. Um, but it remains to be said that um, this, this is merely a tutorial. You would probably ideally just delete the project once you're done, uh, just to minimize any billing. So let's start here. So it says uh, to use the cloud uh, resource manager and to uh, create a cloud platform project if you don't already have one. So we're just going to create one. I already have got one for the visualization, but I'll just walk you through how you would create one. So let's just start with the link. We'll go to uh, GCP. Uh, we'll show you the list of projects that you have. I'm just going to create a new uh, project. I'm just going to call it my visualization project. OK. Um, and create. So it's going to create my project. And in the meantime, while it's doing that, OK. Uh, we're just going to uh, enable billing for, uh, for the project as well. Um, yeah, it's going to tell you uh, how to do this. I've already set up billing for my account, so um, I probably don't need to set up billing here. I just need to make sure I get um, my visualization project uh, set up. Uh, and the third thing to do is to enable BigQuery. Uh, if you don't have billing set up, just uh, walk, walk, walk through um, the steps here. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to enable the BigQuery API uh, for this particular project. So um, just so I'll, we're in the right projects, just make sure you're here selected on the project that you just created. So I'm here on my visualization project. So uh, I'm on the right project. So it says confirm project. Yes, I'm going to make changes to here and I'm going to enable the BigQuery API. And once that's enabled, we're good to go. So um, you'd want to just provide your credentials to the runtime. So that will allow Colab 
to access um, the, uh, the Google Cloud uh, Platform's BigQuery functionalities. Um, and you're going to have to enable this every single time you run the, the Colab Notebook. But it's a small step that just ensures that Google has the right security clearances to access um, what Google needs to access in your GCP account. So let's just uh, get connected. This will all happen on, uh, on the browser, so you're you know, uh, not going to worry about um, having things uh, go wrong uh, so much uh, unless you use a different environment altogether. So I'm going to allow and I'm going to select my personal account. Uh, Google is going to run, uh, going to be able to run these things, just allow it. And once you see the message down here, it says authenticated, you're good to go. Perfect. So now what we want to do is look at um, a data set that we want to use. So if you already have your own data set, now's a good time to just find that data set on BigQuery. So I'm just going to go here to BigQuery, big, B, B, I, G, Query. Um, and just select BigQuery here. Um, now in this project, I have, I have data set that I would um, have uploaded into the project, but I don't have anything. So I'm going to go with the BigQuery public data. There is a swath of um, data sets that you can use uh, from the BigQuery public data. Uh, it's a good idea to just explore uh, what, what um, options there are for you. So if you just explore the public data sets here, so there's stuff on COVID, uh, COVID there's stuff on um, uh, genomics, uh, on Bitcoin, uh, all sorts of things. So what I'm going to look for is um, something I've already uh, kind of eyed uh, earlier, uh, which is um, the taxi, uh, the Chicago taxi uh, data, uh, if I can find it. Here we go, Chicago taxi trips. So it says here, taxi trips. And um, if you open up here, it, you can kind of see the basic schema of, uh, of, the taxi, uh, of the taxi trips. It has a unique key, the taxi ID, uh, when the trip started, when the trip ended, uh, the, the amount of seconds that the trip lasted, the amount of miles that the trip lasted, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, so. This is the data that we're going to be working with. Um, just to um, give you an idea of how big uh, data in something like a big query could be, you can uh, open up a new query and um, just do a count of the data and just have a look and see what kind of da uh, data size you're dealing with. So Google BigQuery is going to run, and it says um, 199 million rows of data. So 200 million, uh, nearly 200 million rows of data. This is not something that you would necessarily load into um, a Colab notebook and have the notebook run uh, fine and dandy because 200 million rows is quite a bit of memory to kind of put into RAM. So what we're going to do is maybe start with looking at um, aggregate statistics, right? So looking at averages, looking at counts, um, looking at um, uh, basic statistics, and kind of start, start exploration um, in, uh, uh, by looking at um, statistical measures. So here, back in the notebook, uh, I have some preamble code. I've got some libraries loaded up. Uh, so I've got matplotlib. I've got numpy pandas, um, which is our kind of matrix manipulation um, uh, library. Pandas is our data frame library. Um, Seaborn is our plotting library that we're going to use. It's kind of like a wrapper on top of matplotlib, but it has a bunch of fun uh, functionalities that makes it really, really useful, really, really quick graph plotting stuff that e eases the workflow a lot. 
Um, and we need to import uh, the Google Cloud BigQuery um, library so that we can start pulling data in. Uh, I've got some um, fig size uh, configuration here. That's just to make the charts appear big so that we can um, see the points and dist distinguish uh, certain things on the screen a lot better. Uh, the default size is tiny, so you, uh, this is a good um, uh, configuration to have uh, starting out. So let's just run that. So the first thing to do is kind of uh, just to do a query. Um, so you can do that by first starting uh, a client uh, using BigQuery. Uh, BigQuery.client with a capital C. And the information that you're going to pass in is a project. Uh, and the project uh, ID is uh, not this my visualization project uh, name. It's actually um, this ID here, triple Benito um, and seven digits. So put in a string, uh, six digits rather, um, and uh, create your client. So once the client is loaded, uh, you can start doing a, uh, you can start doing queries. So you can do qui uh, client.query, and you just write a standard SQL. So this is BigQuery's SQL. BigQuery has certain special um, things that you can do in the SQL queries, uh, and it's important to kind of look at the documentation on Google if you're uh, wanting to do more complex queries, which might speed up your workflow rather than pulling everything into a data, uh, data frame straight away. So that's one option for you to kind of explore. I'm just going to do a standard bog standard query and work from there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to select uh, everything, essentially. Um, select everything from so the table that we're going to use is called uh, BigQuery Public Data. Um, so BigQuery Public Data, how do, how do you know that? It comes from here. So here it says BigQuery-Public-Data. Um, and uh, uh, the database that we're going to look at is Chicago Taxi Trips. So Chicago underscore taxi underscore trips. And uh, the table that we're going to look at is taxi underscore trips. Okay. And uh, select star from here. And let's just get, you know, the first 10 rows or something. And we can get uh, straight away, just go straight to data frame. So we're going to load this straight into a pandas data frame. Let's just call it DF. Um, so... Google BigQuery is going to run in the background. Uh, it's going to do the query and it's going to save it as a data frame and then we can view the data frame here. Cool. So we've got some information here. Um, so as I said, trip seconds, trip miles, uh, trip total, the payment type, the company of the taxi, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. A lot of the data is missing, but uh, let's not worry about that right now. Let's just try to get some um, aggregate statistics running. So the first thing I want to do is, well, the, the most basic kind of thing that you should do is maybe just explore the basic uh, visualizations that you have in Excel, for example. So um, maybe like a pie chart to see, let's say I want to find out which taxi company has the biggest market share um, in, um, in the whole database, right? So, um, so what I would do is select uh, company. So that's the, um, that's the uh, column here, company. And I want to get um, maybe just the um, average. Um, and I want to get the average uh, trip total, maybe. So that's the, the, the amount of money that is paid for that trip. So average trip total and straight into data frame. So um, Google is going to do this uh, query in the background. It's going to happen relatively quick, although we have 299 million rows, uh, sorry, 199 million rows, uh, because some of this 
uh, query are already cached. So some of them run very, very quickly. If you do a, re a really unique query, you're gonna get, um, uh, you're gonna have to wait for a bit. So here we go, let's run that. Uh, whoops, some, uh, uh, I shouldn't have a limit here anymore. Uh, but the query error here, it says select list expression, which is not the group. Oh yeah, so I wanna group by, group by company. So because we, we, we wanna average over the companies. Uh, uh, trip total, right? So uh, let it do, run that, perfect. So now, perfect. Now, so we have a list of companies and the, the average uh, trip total. Actually, the average uh, doesn't tell us much. Uh, I probably wanna do a sum rather. Perfect, so uh, some really big numbers here. So let's uh, just start with a simple uh, pie chart. So we can do uh, data frame dot plot. So pandas has its own plotting um, 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 uh, libraries, not libraries, but um, built-ins underneath that uses matplotlib in the back end. Um, but you, you can start already uh, just using all these plotting stuff um, uh, from, from the data frame uh, itself. So you do data frame dot plot, and then we can do pi. And uh, yeah, we can just run that. Okay, it needs a y. So uh, yeah, my, my data frame, if you hadn't noticed, it says uh, underscore f0. So that's because the aggregate is not named. You can always name this as, uh, let's say, sum total trips or sum trip total. And then in your new data frame, it's gonna say sum trip total as the header. So then we can plot pi sum trip total. Alrighty. Um, Ah, sorry, yeah, it needs a y equals. So this is one of those things that uh, pandas is notoriously bad for. Okay, so uh, that doesn't look that nice uh, because it's uh, kind of taken the x as, um, as the index. But if we set the x as company, uh, we'll get better labels. Um, we're still going to see a really messy, oh, okay, that didn't work. Uh, I think if we set the index, so if we set the index to be um, the company, that will change the data frame so that um, they will name it a bit better. Rather than numbers, it will now use the company names. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. Uh, okay, so this is a really messy pie chart. Uh, you can uh, set the legend to be false uh, because, I mean, it's kind of obvious from, um, from just looking at here. So we can see that there are, um, you know, some, some weird artifacts. So there are um, taxis that, uh, taxi companies that are null, so like none here. And there's a uh, Metrojet taxi here, flash cab. So taxi affiliation services seems to have uh, the, 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 the big um, uh, market share here. Uh, of course, you can um, kind of filter this list, uh, maybe just take the top 10 and then do a pie chart. So, um, uh, but uh, in, in the interest of time, let's, let's just move on. Uh, another thing that you could do is a bar chart. So um, let's say I just wanna see, uh, oh, may maybe the, the pie chart doesn't tell you as much information, the bar chart will tell you like how, how different um, the, the taxi companies are um, you know, in, um, in more realistic terms. Or... So uh, what you could do is then uh, do the same kind of thing here but set the pi, instead of pi, you set to bar. And you should see, okay, 
Uh, that, again, is a little messy. I think it's always a good idea to kind of sort this data if you're going to use a pi uh, if you're going to use a bar chart. So let's do that. So I'm going to set my df to be df .set, set index company and I'm going to look at the data frame. So what I'm going to do is the data frame, I'm going to sort the sum trip total. And after we, ooh, yeah, uh, yeah, you, you should probably only do this once. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Uh, okay, now that we've sorted it, I want to take the last 10. So let's say I want the last 10 onwards and then I want to do a plot bar and the y is my sum trip total. Cool. So now we can see like okay tax affiliation services is making uh, big bucks and then next come uh, none. Well that's not too useful. Flash cab, uh, and then dispatch taxi affiliations, yellow cab, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's um, kind of like, you know, the, the basic uh, plots that you, uh, you could do. Um, from there, you can uh, then move on to maybe looking at uh, doing a scatter plot. So uh, a scatter plot would determine that you would need uh, two variables or two uh, columns in, in, the, uh, in the data that you can plot as an x-axis and another column that you would plot in the y direction. Um, since we're still working with aggregate statistics right now, just to ease our, um, uh, ease our torment, um, let's maybe look at what's the relationship between the cost of a trip and the amount of time that the trip took. Generally, you would see a straight line because the longer a taxi trip is, um, the, um, the, the, the more it costs, right? So uh, let's now just create a new query uh, where we're going to do um, an ag, uh, so we're going to take, we're not going to do, yes, we're still going to group by company or we're not. No, we're still going to uh, do uh, group by company, but we're going to maybe average yeah we're gonna average the trip seconds as we're gonna call it average trip seconds and we're gonna get the average um, trip uh, uh, miles. So that will be our distance, average trip miles. Okay. Um, we're still gonna group by company, so we're gonna have almost a scatter plot of companies um, and their average trip seconds and average trip miles. Okay, so let's have a look at our data frame here. So we have this company, average trip uh, seconds, average trip miles. So this will kind of tell you which company is charging a lot of money, which company is charging um, less and so on. So let's, uh, let's scatter plot that. So we can df.plot.scatter. We can scatter um, average trip seconds in the x-axis and then average trip miles in the y-axis. Miles. There we go. Okay, so 
So these are uh, the, so each point on uh, on this plot is a, a taxi company essentially, um, and as you'd expect, the on av uh, their average trip seconds would amount to uh, well, sorry, um, the, it should be average trip total. We since we want to look at um, the price per mile, uh, this I would have to change to total. Uh, right, yeah. So that's the plot I'm looking for. Um, so you can see, like, um, so the, uh, the 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 taxi companies there there are some which make lots of trips and earn a lot, and that's generally what you would see if uh, taxis make uh, on average uh, lots of trips or uh, longer trips they would earn more money. But there are also um, companies which are outliers. So if you look at this uh, distribution, you can kind of see there are this guy. Uh, so um, they make very long trips, but um, their, their mileage is very low. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, they, they make a lot of money um, uh, uh, for, for very few miles. So they are basically overcharging. Uh, this is the, 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 the most notorious overcharger here. And there are guys down here who have almost zero trip miles, but uh, but have high trip totals, which could tell us something about the nature of the data. That could mean that there are uh, problems with possibly missing information, or um, taxi companies don't record this properly. Maybe they don't uh, put the ticker on, or maybe measure uh, the odometer properly. Uh, and things like that. But generally what you would see is a kind of straight line kind of pattern here, right? So that can already kind of tell you the nature of the data that you're working with if you're, uh, if you're dealing with data that is really, really weird or um, troublesome. Um, and it already tells you a lot of information like there are taxis that overcharge and there are taxis that even uh, maybe even undercharge. And those are the taxi companies that you're probably going to ride next time. Okay, perfect. So uh, now let's kind of uh, move in and start working on um, real data. So we're, we've been working with aggregate statistics and we really want to play around with um, the rows of data themselves. Um, so for a data set this big, it doesn't make sense to, um, to pull all of the data in because, as I said before, the, your, your environment is not going to be able to withstand um, all, of that, um, all of that information in one single RAM. Uh, so it, the, the, the idea here is to just take a section of the data, so maybe, let's say, 100,000 rows or so, and um, work, work with that small subset and build your visualization so that you can pull in new data later on and then have the same visualization um, and, uh, yeah, and play around with it a bit more. So here, what I'm going to do is do a new query. I'm going to select everything this time. Uh, no more group buys. And I'm just going to have a limit. Um, I'm going to take the, the first 10,000 rows of, uh, of this data set, right? Uh, and set it as my data frame. Perfect. So now I have 10,000 rows of information that I can now start playing around with. Okay. So the first thing uh, that I'd like to, uh, I always like to do is just look at histograms. Histograms will tell you how um, particular features in your data are distributed. So uh, if you're looking at, for example, in this, uh, in this particular data set, let's say you want to know how, uh, what the amount of a taxi trip is, uh, what's the di distribution of, uh, of the total amount of a taxi trip, right? So histograms are a good idea. Um, 
So to do that, you would do df dot, uh, well, df trip total dot hist. And that will immediately just show you uh, a histogram. So unfortunately, we're dealing with real world data. And, and as I've said, real world data is really messy sometimes. And as you can see, the histogram just shows you a single bar that is between zero and, I don't know, some, somewhere around 600-ish, 750, 800-ish. Um, and that's like the dominant bar and everything else is pretty much empty. So there's 10,000 instances of those, which is uh, not great. So what you can, uh, what I often do is just increase the number of bins. If you have a lot of data, if you have a lot of rows of data, just increase the number of bins and that will tell you, um, that will kind of spread out the, the histogram a bit and uh, show you more information. So let's just set the bins to 100, let's say. Okay, that still doesn't tell us much information because uh, I think uh, the data is largely occupied by really small values here. So what I usually do at this point if I want to get a better uh, histogram is start doing clipping. So clipping is just taking extreme values, clipping it down to, um, um, to a value that you think might be a bit more reasonable. So it seems that one trip took maybe a, just above $7,000 uh, here. So I'm just going to do df uh, trip total. And I'm going to clip it between 0 and, let's say, $200. And I'm going to save that as a new column. I'm going to call it trip total clip. And let's just see what that looks like. So I have my trip total clipped here. And then I would um, plot that DF trip total clip. And, uh, and let's plot a histogram of that. Give it 100 bins. Cool. That looks a lot better. So that looks like a distribution that um, seems to be more realistic rather than um, this distribution that we were seeing earlier. So it seems like 200 seems to be um, still uh, pretty big in the range of values that are common. So let's um, shrink it down even more. I think about $100 seems to be um, the absolute maximum. So let's just change that clip value. Um, I'm going to even go down to $80. Why not? And I'm going to replot. Great. So um, this, this looks a lot better. So there's still, uh, you can see there's a bunch of zeros here. Um, almost 200 uh, of those trips that, uh, in, uh, that were captured in this 10,000 rows are zero. Um, and there are... Um, there's this big spike here around nine dollars, eight dollars, uh, around about that, um, and then it goes down, and then there's like some some other modes here, and these uh, anything that is at eighty is basically anything above eighty dollars essentially, right? And you can do this for uh, not just the trip total, um, but do it for the rest of the data. So trip seconds, trip miles. Just to prove a point, um, you, you will see, if I plot here trip seconds uh, in, in, the same, uh, in the same manner, you will see a lot of zeros. And, and I think that's just the nature of the data. Real world data is really messy and um, it's problematic. And this is one of the things that you have to deal with in visualization. Um, so we, we can do the same to um, the trip seconds, just change rather than trip total here. Uh, I'm going to use trip seconds. Seconds. Um, well, I don't know what the uh, good value is. Um, I'm going to say uh, it seems like the biggest value around here is 3,000. So let's say uh, 4,000. Um, just for the sake of um, trying things out. And let's give it a plot again. Okay, 
that uh, seems uh, a little bit better. So if you get artifacts like this when you're doing visualization where you, you have these um, a, a seemingly nice distribution but filled with holes, just lower the number of bins down. So uh, I estimate that maybe about half is, uh, is pretty good. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a pretty good distribution. I'd even go down to maybe 30. Yeah, so that's the kind of distribution that you're looking at. So a lot of trips take about 600 seconds, which is, what, 10 minutes? Um, um, yeah, uh, and we're still getting a bunch of zeros as we've seen earlier. So if I change this bin to 100 again, you can see there's like a big spike here at zero. Again, na nature of real world data. So uh, from here, what I would generally want to do is just get cleaner data. And to get cleaner data, we've identified that um, the trip seconds and trip total, and I'll show you just um, again for, for the sake of uh, completeness, that trip miles uh, also has these uh, zeros problem. So here we go, lots of zeros there. Um, let, let's just do the clipping again. Miles, uh, I don't know what's a good value here. Trip miles seems to max out around 13. I see 16, so I'm just going to say, uh, let's clip it at 20. And let's just plot the histogram again. Okay, so yeah, again, lots of zeros here. Uh, some uh, tr uh, Seems like the mileage is about a mile uh, worth of trips and there seems to be a secondary bump here that is about 17 so let's say about 18 miles so uh, that's another interesting thing that you will find with histograms there there might be two modes in your data that you might uh, not have otherwise found out um, so let's aim at getting just cleaner data um, so uh, for, uh, for for that what you want to do is maybe just do a query, but um, have a where clause, uh, and you set um, trip miles. I want, let's say, trip miles is at least one, right? Uh, or greater than zero, essentially. And if anything that is bigger than zero is uh, probably a, a good thing. Um, we can even make it uh, even more stringent by, okay, I want to focus on any trip that is more than one mile, right? Um, and I'm going to do the same for the rest. So, and, um, and trip total is at least $1. And uh, trip seconds is at least one second. So, um, yeah, so these will find trips that are not weird essentially not like problematic data okay and we'll set that as data frame and let's see what that data frame looks like so it's done the query perfect so now what you could do is um, uh, so have a look at maybe uh, just plotting uh, these uh, histograms again. So uh, let's have a trip miles, his bins equals 100. Okay, so we're still getting extreme values uh, at this end, but um, you know, you can further, um, uh, further add into your query here. Let's say trip miles, we've found, uh, we, we set the clip before to, what was it, 80 miles or some, uh, no, is it 80 miles? We set it to 20 miles. So I, I, I want uh, at the very maximum, maybe, I don't know, uh, it seems like 100 miles uh, seems reasonable. So anything less than 100 miles and um, where the trip total is uh, less than 100 dollars because I don't think people pay for that so let's just aim at getting uh, a cleaner data that we can then work with uh, that is you know not 
necessarily problematic. This would be uh, looking for trips that are daily kind of trips, right? So trips that are maybe from work to, uh, from home to work or from workplace to maybe a, a party or, um, or a dinner or something, right? Um, here we go and let's have a look at the histogram again. Okay, that looks a bit better so we don't have any more zeros. Uh, it's still kind of distributed this way but uh, whatever. So uh, let's have a look at all the other histograms, trip seconds. Yeah, well okay, trip seconds still has the problems of it being uh, extremely high so I'm probably gonna set that uh, to less than, I think we said it was 4,000 earlier. So let's just uh, run those queries. Okay, um, that looks a bit better. Yeah, I think uh, this is a this is a data that we can now work with that is kind of legit. Okay, so um, histograms very useful for kind of identifying problems with your data if uh, if there are uh, any. Okay, so let's start um, using the Seaborn library at this point because now we have some clean data that we can use. Um, uh, let's maybe just look at doing more scatter plots um, and uh, maybe just uh, play around with uh, information that is numerical just to start. Um, so what I'd like to do is maybe um, just look at the data a bit more and see, okay, we have taxi companies. We can find out um, um, how the, uh, how, uh, well, maybe just scatter the trip total and the trip uh, miles just to see how much, uh, which, uh, uh, what, what these taxis are charging in general. So uh, we can do df.plot.scatter. Now this is different from the scatter that we're doing before because before we had aggregate statistics, right? So uh, here we're going to scatter uh, trip, uh, trip seconds on the x-axis and then trip miles on the y-axis. Cool. So that's a very interesting pattern. So you can kind of see that there are, there are clusters of information here. Um, uh, there, there are trips that kind of cluster around here where the information is kind of divided into strips of even width uh, with stuff below it and there are scatters all the way up here, here, here so um, again, uh, so some of these trips again like you'll see very low time trips but they uh, appear to have um, uh, very long distances, which uh, again doesn't make sense. Um, when you have data like this, uh, especially when data is kind of concentrated down here in uh, in this region, what I, w I usually like to do is kind of plot it in log scale. So because data uh, at the extremes are very rare and data are kind of clustered towards uh, the lower values, a log scale would uh, help you kind of uh, kind of compress this uh, this range. So we can save this as an axis and um, set ax dot set x scale log and do the same for y scale. And that will kind of compress down our uh, plot, our scatter plot to kind of show be uh, better distribution. So uh, just as a comparison, I'm going to plot the same thing above that we just saw earlier. So you can kind of see uh, this, this clustering has now kind of moved in uh, a bit better. So you, you've, get, you've gotten this kind of uh, normal-ish kind of cluster here, uh, this kind of low cluster here, so that the information is a bit more visible when, when we start using the log scale. So this cluster is a bit big, and then now these are the you know, erratic, uh, erratic values. Um, we, we, we can pursue uh, more, uh, more clean data, uh, but at this point I think I'm, um, I'm pretty happy um, as long as uh, the 
you know, uh, you, 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 can, you can start to see distributions very, very uh, easily already, and I think uh, I'm fine with that. Um, we're, we still haven't used Seaborn, but Seaborn comes to play here very, very easily. So um, just uh, looking at the Seaborn library, um, we, we, can, um, we can start using some of the really cool functionalities that Seaborn has. So one thing I would like to do, sticking with the scatterplot uh, theme, is um, kind of do a, a scatterplot that, um, that is hued. So um, I'm looking for maybe yeah we can we can do a, a, a linear plot like this um, which uh, scatters uh, the values and you know plots a line toward uh, through it and we can color by the uh, by the category that we want so if we have categorical variables. Um, uh, like for example, taxi company, uh, we, we can get this, uh, this kind of visualization. So I'm going to do sns.lnplot and then we pass in uh, the data which is from our data frame and um, uh, we need an x and a y and a hue. So our x as we've done before is the trip seconds and our Y is the trip miles. And we're going to color it by the taxi company. So company. There we go. Cool. OK, so we have a lot of taxi companies. Um, and they're, uh, they're kind of all over the place. So it's probably a, a good idea to maybe just focus on a few, maybe like the top five. Um, so let's, let's find the top five taxi companies. So if I do DF, um, if I group by company, um, and if I do dot sum, uh, well, yes, if I do sum and I want to look at the total, uh, trip total. Or maybe, or maybe just a count to see uh, which company makes the most trips. I think that's, uh, that's a good idea in and of itself. Um, and I'll just sort values uh, unique key. Um, so the the best, the top five are these guys. So I'm just going to copy them here, uh, deleting uh, the rest of the stuff outside of the names. Um, and I'm just going to make this our list of taxi features. So taxi companies, okay, comma, 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 comma. And I'm going to say these are my selected companies. So then we can do a filter, df where df company. is equal or, or is in selected companies. Okay. So these are, uh, okay, so we have uh, much fewer rows, 5,000 rows, but still, uh, they are the majority of the companies. Um, and we can just pull in uh, this LM plot again. Uh, change it to SDF and see our plot. Cool. So uh, the, the plot's a little tiny, but I guess uh, Seaborn is not playing nice with, uh, with, my, um, with my presets. But that's fine, because we can uh, do, a quick, um, do a quick hack here, where we just said uh, a figure size. 
axis and we can plot it on this axis. Uh, PLT dot, not figure, subplots. Uh, okay, so uh, SNS does, uh, Seaborn does not want that. Um, okay, I guess uh, we'll, we'll have to deal with this. Okay, so we can see that the Chicago Carriage Cap Corp encompass these, uh, you know, this group here, and then um, taxi affiliation services are kind of overlapped with dispatch taxi affiliation and Sun Taxi. So again, uh, that, that, that's uh, kind of some information that you can see here that, well, um, well, trip seconds and trip miles is probably not useful, but maybe trip total is probably a better um, plot to get. Okay, yeah, so um, lots of mileage, uh, but very little cost. And uh, so, you know, the Chicago Car uh, Carriage Cap Corp are, you know, uh, are probably the best uh, company because they charge very, very low values. And the uh, taxi affiliation services seems to be very expensive. Uh, and Sun Taxi is, uh, they're, they're almost like competitors for each other. So that, that, that's something pretty cool to see. Now, um, we, let's move on to something else. Uh, the, the final thing, uh, just before we wrap up um, this primer, is we, we can look at doing pivot tables. So pivot tables are very, very useful in data visualization. It tells you um, the, the, the way two variables kind of affect each other. Um, when they are binned. So for example, if I wanted to find out um, how, uh, how taxis operate throughout the day, because we have information here of when the trip started and when the trip ended. So if we could know uh, when do taxis operate more often uh, than others, maybe in terms of the day of week and in terms of the hours of the day. Right, so um, that, that might be useful information. So let's start uh, by creating a pivot table. It's uh, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So you start with the data frame and then you do pivot um, and you would pass in in the pivot function uh, the index. So the index I want to say, uh, let's say the hours of the day. So the hours of the day are kind of encoded in this timestamp information. So we have to pull that information out first. So I'm going to say df dot uh, hour uh, is uh, df dot um, trip um, trip start timestamp dot dt dot hour. So that will give us the hour of the day in 24 hour format. And then let's say I want the day of the week. Uh, st uh, start timestamp dot dt dot um, day name. I think is the function. Um, and I would uh, like the index to be hour, and I want the uh, columns to be uh, day of week, and uh, my values are the unique trips, uh, unique key I think is the term. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at what that looks like. Uh, index could uh, contains duplicate entries, cannot reshape. Um, okay, um, this is where I jump into pandas. Uh, <laughs> Um, documentation because I, I tend to forget how these things work. Um, so pivot index foo columns values index columns maybe this should be that index contains duplicate entries cannot reshape. Um, okay I'm gonna jump onto my backup notebook Um, just to see how I did uh, the pivot table. So always good to have a backup in, uh, when you're doing these 
kind of things. Um, should be at the bottom here somewhere. df.pivot table, not pivot. Yeah, my bad. Pivot table. And this should be fine. Uh, nope. Uh, I think oh, I'm. Pivot table. I'm just going to borrow this. Yeah. So I'm going to set uh, df.pivot table equals values. The values are the unique keys, so the unique trips. Um, the index is the day of week, and the columns is the hour, and the, aggreg uh, the aggregation function is count. So let's have a look at what that table looks like. Yep, so it's uh, this kind of thing here. It doesn't tell us much. I mean, it tells you like, okay, on Friday, we have uh, 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 at 4 a.m., you have eight trips. Uh, or I guess this would be, um, yeah, 4 a.m. Because hour zero is 12 a.m. Um, and at the 11th hour, you have 111 trips. But uh, it's uh, kind of hard to see because uh, the, the table, is, first of all, it's truncated. Um, so a, a good thing to do here is heat maps. Heat maps are uh, very prominent in uh, visualization, so you can use um, Seaborn to kind of plot that heat map. So let's save this as my pivot table. And in the heat map, I can just do PT. And there you go. So, um, so the day of the week is not ordered. But that can be changed pretty easily. I've got uh, some helper functions here at the top just to get the day of the week ordered. Um, so we can do day or day of week and then I'll do pt dot location or day of week. And then we plot the heat map again. Perfect. So this will tell you um, uh, what what you know what what the activity is like throughout the week. So uh, on Saturday and Sunday, so you can see that there's a lot of activity around midnight. Naturally, because it's weekends, people are usually out and want to get home uh, uh, to sleep for the next day. And throughout you know a weekday, there's a big gap here uh, after midnight where no one is taking trips, and uh, the majority of trips are taken in the afternoon. It seems maybe people going home. Um, um, uh, yeah, so uh, that, that's kind of the information that you can uh, pull out from, uh, from this. So how do we reuse all of this? We, we've, uh, we've gotten something running. Uh, how, how do we reuse uh, you know, all this stuff, um, in, let's say, in the future when you get more data? So to simulate that, we can go back to our query here. And let's say you, you want to pull in maybe the... Uh, the um, a uh, hundred thousand trips and kind of analyze uh, that information, and you know we 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 want to look for a trip uh, total that is uh, or maybe trip mileage that is more than ten miles, or yeah, ten miles is actually a bit more. Uh, you know what? Uh, for the interest of time, let's just keep this uh, values the same. But we're just gonna pump up uh, our our data set size, right? So uh, we're We'll run the query, uh, wait for it to run, uh, wait for BigQuery to kind of pull the data out for us. Uh, should be relatively quick, maybe under, under a minute, usually is the amount of time that uh, it takes. 100,000 rows is still, um, is still doable uh, in, uh, in uh, data frames. Uh, once you get to the millions, it, start gets, uh, it starts to get troublesome. Uh, especially when uh, you have limited RAM um, uh, to deal with. And also the query will take a lot longer, um, so you're going to have to deal with uh, the wait mainly. So let's just wait for the query to kind of run here. Okay, perfect. So it took about a minute and one second. Uh, there's 100,000 columns here. Let's look at the histogram. 
Cool. So a lot more natural looking histogram uh, now, uh, which is uh, great. Um, let's see how our, sta uh, how s our scatter looks here. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so still similar patterns, but I guess because we're getting uh, more data, more of the holes are being uh, filled up. So you can see a large blob here um, uh, starting to form. So it's starting to form like a normal uh, kind of distribution, largely, uh, largely around this uh, peak here, as you might imagine. Um, let's uh, do our line plot for the top companies. I hope they're still the top companies. Uh, well, actually, no, this is uh, for all the companies. That's a, probably a bad idea. So let's uh, uh, look at our top companies this time. Uh, City service is still there. Sun Taxi is not there anymore. Um, okay, so let's uh, pull, pull these guys. Um, uh, so actually, you, you, you can get, um, you can do index like that to, to kind of get um, the, the, the bottom companies uh, quicker, uh, quicker. Um, and just copy and paste them here. Oops, I only took four. I need a fifth one. Let's go city service. Okay. Um, let's. Those are our selected companies. Let's look at our um, line plot. Let's see how how these companies are looking. Okay. So uh, taxi affiliation services seem to be doing something strange down here, but the majority of them are mainly competing uh, with one another with some trips are uh, maybe like airport trips or long, long distance trips. Um, uh, let's make our pivot table and let's see if our heat map uh, is looking. Okay, so the, the values kind of averaged out a bit better. So um, uh, we can see, uh, uh, throughout the week, uh, there's this hole that's starting to form uh, in the early hours of the day, and um, you know they're they're concentrated around Friday, it seems. Um, yeah, actually, uh, the 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 order here is uh, uh, reversed, so let's uh, reverse that, so it looks a bit more natural. There you go. Um, so Monday, Tuesday, so there's a lot of trips happening Friday afternoon. It seems people going out Friday evening um, and then taking the trips uh, um, probably late late in the night. So that's kind of uh, uh, pretty much it for um, uh, the primer to data visualization with uh, cloud data. We've seen how we can kind of pull uh, data from the cloud uh, using um, Google Cloud play, uh, Platform's BigQuery. This is specifically for BigQuery uh, because we're using Colab uh, in conjunction. Now there are people who develop uh, pipelines or libraries for connecting to AWS Redshift and other uh, data sources. So uh, have a Google of how that works. Um, if you have um, a subscription to uh, Google Workspaces, there is um, something called Connected Sheets which allows you to do a lot of these analysis in a Google Sheet, uh, which I think is a lot easier. But unfortunately, I don't have a Google Workspace um, uh, account, so I can't really show you guys that. Um, the other thing that Google provides is something called Google Data Studio, uh, which works directly with, um, um, with BigQuery. And you can open that by here going to Explore Data and Explore with Data Studio. Um, this is probably something we can do on a, uh, on a later talk, but uh, again, the same kind of stuff, but you, it's, it's more drag and drop kind of thing, um, uh, something that you can explore if you're doing visualization. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this workshop. I hope you've gained some uh, interesting insights on how to start doing your own visualizations, um, getting, pulling information out from, uh, from your data set, and um, keeping this uh, uh, information in a Colab notebook, by the way, which is saved onto uh, your Google Drive. So the next time you need to run the same sort of stuff, 
maybe change a few queries uh, here and there. You just uh, save the notebook, pull it up again on Google, uh, on Colab, and start running the cells. And you know you're you're back to uh, where your visualization um, pipeline left off. All right. So that's uh, that's it for me. Um, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you found this um, um, informational. All right. Take care. Bye bye.